last week on Old School Outdoors. Welcome to the Yukon. Never been in that area before. We have uh, tags for uh, grizzly bear, moose, and uh, doll sheep. We're going two different directions from here. I'm going to go two hours to the north, two hours to the south. So Dennis and I split up from here, but uh, been like three hours on horseback. Went from the main camp, made it to our spike camp. The first day it was fogged in, so we took off in the rain and the fog. I flipped down two or three times going down the mountain. I know you got a good ram up here, and it's worth trying to get up here one time, but mm -hmm. I can't make it up here two times. Woke again this morning to a nice steady peppering rain, about three mountains over. And you can see uh, seven or eight goats there. I think we got them spotted. We know exactly where they're gonna be. We're gonna make a short three-day run and bring them back. Nice ram, moose, possibly a bear, all in one haul. With the fresh snow, we'll head up 1118 trail. Yeah. It's an old school trail of mine. The last time I was up there was 19, so. I'll take you on, hadn't been hunted in 12 years. That's, a, that's my kind of territory. Let's go see what we can find. Look, there's a big old grizzly there. Yeah, big. Well, I think we should probably get over here and look at that bear a little closer, try to get in for a shot. All right. Look, what's that stood up right there next? Right where he's walking by, something just stood up. Oh, there's a big bull moose there. I told him, get on that bull moose, and he gets on the bull moose. He's right above that white rock. Okay, What's it? how far is that? That's got him. Shoot again. Move. Move, let's get another one into him. How far now? 670. There he, he went down. You rolled him! Yeah! He's down! Oh man. He's a goner. That's a heck of a moose, guys. Beautiful. That sucker is full grown, isn't he? Man. I know the barrel is 26 inches. What I'm happy about is <laughs> that 670 yard neck shot. Found some nice ram yesterday, and uh, we're gonna go back and see if we can find him again this morning. Maybe uh, we'll get above him. That's, I think, the game plan. Uh, along the way, uh, we left the spike camp and uh, stumbled across a grizzly bear. You ready? Um, I suspect he's dead by now, but suspecting and knowing is two different things. When you're in the brush that's approximately six to eight foot tall and uh, it's thick enough for you doing good to see 15 or 20 yards in any direction and there's a wounded grizzly, uh, makes one a, a little skittish at to say the least. I think that finished him off. It was an adventure. Between those claws and that head, it would be dangerous, to say the least. Old School Outdoors is being brought to you by Tubbs Hardware and Cajun Gifts. Tubbs has had roots in Bossier since 1922. We are your hometown hardware stores. Owned by local folks, Tubbs is committed to old school friendly service and long lasting products with the longest and strongest warranties. Back with our parts and service and easy financing. Y'all come see us and may God bless the USA. Back at camp, Dennis and Greg reconvene to discuss their latest harvests. 
Yeah, he got some scratchers, hasn't he? I'm telling you. Where were they been? Where we've been seeing all these bears, all that ground tore the heck up too. So the time we got to where we were in good uh, shooting range, well, you know, they were gone. They were 500 yards further down the damn mountain. They went down while they we were down. coming up. Yeah, while we were coming up, they were going That's down. Like, this is some of the roughest riding. You know, Wyoming is like oh, kindergarten compared yeah. to this. Yeah, this oh, is absolutely. rough, rough. And a lot of the places we went. I'm sure y'all did do it. No trail. You just take off through the middle and We've been brush. in a couple of areas that got some, some mushy and boggy that we, they got slammed to the chest. Oh, God. And just leg break through. And... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's it's some of the toughest, toughest. And they keep going. That's some, that's that's some, some horses tough. right See, there. I thought it was worth horses. After resupplying, Greg takes off to try to fill the rest of his tags. We went up the old school trail again. It was actually the same trail that Greg had shot his moose. Get on the horses and, and we go really looking for, because I've got a grizzly tag and, and there's wolf in the area. I was gonna do a, maybe a wolf and grizzly was kind of in a little valley and, and a good area, I'd seen a lot of sign. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of stone sheep, which is a bunch of rocks that look like sheep. But every, you gotta look at every one because it's a lot of white rocks to have to sit there and look at them. And, it's hard to distinguish at this distance, and I don't have a spotting scope, so just have to wait and look, see if that rock moves. If the rock moves, then it's a sheep. And we got up there, and we got lucky. We spotted them. Two rams came over the ridge. They're always skyline. The rams are always on the skyline. These sheep, they just find their little basins like that over there on uh -huh. Tin Cup, and they just stay there until they're blown out. As long as they got water and feed and the getaway. They just stay tight. Yeah. They know when it's hunting season, eh? Lo and behold, we see 15 ewes on the mountain about a mile off. The rams the will be separate, okay. but they won't be far from the ewes, maybe a mile or so at most okay. in, here, in this area. Top of the peak, two rams just moving rapidly along the top of that peak. Well, let's get around here. There's okay. a really good basin down around this mountain. And we'll probably take the horses up into that basin and we keep watching them so we'll see where they bed down to and you know maybe we'll have a chance to get to them greg and lucas are going after some rams they saw on top of a ridge so the horseback riding in the yukon is pretty rugged we've got a lot of rocky areas and a lot of boggy areas the ground, I can't explain it. It's kind of like a sponge with trees growing in it. Be prepared for rough riding. I mean, they'll be bashing your knees off of trees. The, the horses work really hard here. You gotta have a bunch of horses in your string so you can use, you can use different horses every day for maybe three days. You gotta have horses you can switch off. I really was amazed at the size of the feet on these horses. It's like, Man, these are, this looks like Clydesdale feet, but once you see what terrain they have to go through, you understand why they use these big footed horses. It's unbelievable. We just came from that down there. It's a long ride uphill, a long ways. We're almost to the top. We're gonna hike from here, look over the other side. Hopefully we can catch some big rams over there on the sunny side. We got the wind right. So if they there, we'll have the drop on them. Got to the top, crested it, and there were two rams, I think 1,500 yards or so from us, and, and they were just right on the top of the knoll. And there was like one knoll, and then they go down in the valley and another one. back to the same mountain. We crest over the top of it, no rams. Climb to the top of the mountain. 
we're directly above where we saw the sheep yesterday. We're about 450 yards from where they were, so the guide's gone off looking on the other side and seen some other sheep, but right here below us where we saw them yesterday, so we're where we need to be. It just happened to be no sheep right in here. The mountain, it's just like a big peak, and you know, we can hunt either side of it, backside. Sheep are in there somewhere, we just have to find them. We skirt around the backside of the mountain, and this is a long, tough, it was rocks and boulders. It was uh, like mountain climbing type stuff. We should have had some ropes and been rappelling in some of the parts. We get up to perfect view where we were like 500 yards from where the, the two sheep were nothing down in that draw. But off in a distance, about a mile or so, on a shell slide, perched right on the top, one little green patch was feeding on, were two rams there that were, um, they were there. It was just impossible at that time to have a chance to put a stalk on them. Not for us today, huh? Not for us today. Tomorrow. You stay there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we descended, got back in late that evening, and I just had to crawl off the horse. It was just, I was worn out. Crawled into the bed and thinking, if I can get up in the morning, I don't know whether we'll go sheep hunting or not. I don't know if I had another hunt in me. Next morning, get up. I walk around a little bit around the camp, and it's like, well, I, I maybe my old knee will hold up. And we weren't really looking to do any sheep hunting because we were all sore from the from the day before. We were going to go up to Greg's moose kill and look for a grizzly, or maybe find a wolf or a wolverine. We're sitting there, kind of scouting, looking for grizzly. A lot of blueberries in the where they feed on. What do we see? Two big rams just came over the ridge there. The front one's big, he's a monster. Come up this draw here, get up on top. But we'll watch them and we'll see where they bed down, hopefully. So they're just working that ridge to the south. We're gonna see if we can see them bed down somewhere. They're still moving. We'll figure out what wind's kind of coming right at us, trying to get the wind. Figure out how we're going to get up there and get around to them. And hopefully they're still there. That's always the problem. This is going to be kind of a blind stalk, but they're on the other side of the mountain. They can't see us. Lucas asked me, he said, boss, you got one more hike in you? I said, well, I, I didn't come here to play tiddlywinks. I guess we'll try it one more time. We saw those two rams cross over. Uh, Lucas has gone over the other side. I'm just standing here with the horses. He's got a glass. See what, uh, see what he can see. I ended up actually running up the mountain to see where the rams had gone because I didn't know how far they'd gone or where they went or even if the ram was legal. So I got up there and uh, found the rams bedded at about 500 yards was as close as I could get to them. So I ran back down the mountain to get Greg. With the rams located, they head up the backside of the ridge using it as cover. We get to the peak of this rock sliding mountain area and there's one little knoll. Get down. We pop up, sit down, there they are. Okay. okay just stay low. I got it. We had to stay low and kind of belly crawl towards the rams.
the rams were actually across a draw so we were shooting it was a pretty level shot 516 yards no other i mean it's like we're on this peak they're on the next peak that's as close as we can get just belly crawl up to this little knob here We set the Lucas's backpack up. I get a good rest on it. He's, so he's the one on the top laying down? Top left, yeah. yeah. That little one's down there below him. It was 516. I know I can make that shot, but what's the wind doing? And the, the sheep just laying there, laying down. The big ram's just right on top of this, just perched up. They've got every angle. They can see this way, that way, above them. We're just right peeking over the top, so they hadn't seen us. He's laying down there, that big one's laying down. Uh -huh. We'll just wait until he gets up. Okay. Gives you a nice broad side shot because he's, he's 516. So you want him, he's quite a ways out there, so you want him broadside. Gotcha. We got a little wind coming from the south. What do you think, the wind? We got about five to 10? Yeah, 10 mile an hour wind. Okay. Well, that'll give me about, that's, that's 18 inches at 500 yards. At that distance, you have to know a 180 grain bullet at 10 mile an hour wind will drift 18 inches. If you're sitting there and you, th and you just know what your drop is and not what your windage is, and you take a shoulder shot and it's drifted, depending on which way it's facing, you're either gonna hit it in the, in the rump or the gut, or you're gonna miss it to the front if he's facing the other way. There he is, he's getting up, the big one's getting up. Top, top left. We were able to lay there and get our breath. I told them we were going to wait until the rams got up to take a shot. This was a one shot opportunity. Bottom line. There he goes, he's dead. 516 yards. You got him, buddy. Oh, it's cool. Big one. That one. Big ram, he's heavy. He's down. He's heavy. Oh, yeah, he's down. Stay on him. He died right on that ridge line. We made the long trek then. Wasn't the 500 yards across, but it was about a a mile the time we went down and came back up. Good job, bud. Thank you, man. It was an old fighting thing. He was nine, maybe 10 year old ram. Little horns cracked up. He's been doing some fighting. Beautiful old uh, ram, mature. Yep, beautiful, beautiful animal. I couldn't have been happier. Couldn't have been happier with the shot. Toughest hunt I've been on in my life. We got in late that night. The next morning, guess what? Fried eggs and tenderloin of sheep, and it was delicious. It was all worth the trip. Oh yeah, brother. He's a good legal man. That's good. That's good. Still bleeding out this side. Look at his horn. See how this horn comes out? Mm -hmm. This one, he had been fighting and it broke it. Probably oh, down. Crane that whole side of that horn in. Yeah. He's gnarly. He's about 10 years old. The one thing about this hunt that'll probably stand out uh, is the toughness. I mean, once we got into it and uh, realized what we had, uh, it is not a uh, old man's game. It, it's definitely for younger men. Boom. Greg and I got through it okay. Uh, I lost approximately 10 pounds in the process, so 
It, uh, and it wasn't from lack of food. It was a lot of the exertion every day. It's rugged. I oh, mean, it's rugged. But you old boys are rugged too. You never no, quit. No, can't quit. No. Can't be no quicker. Quitter got to be like Ricky Bobby. You're not first, you're last. Not first, you're last. <laughs> we had a wonderful time, and uh, I think Greg would agree. Uh, it's an experience we both enjoyed. I'm not sure that we are of, of age to go back again. Come to Tubbs to spend less time mowing and have more fun grilling.